Typically, February is a very hot month for phone launches and this year it's no different. February 2022, we are expecting a lot of major phone launches and in this video, let's take a look at what they are. My name is Ash, you're watching C4E Tech and if you do end up liking what you see, subscribe, turn on notifications and hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. Let's get started. Let's start with Realme. We've already seen the Realme 9 and the 9i and if you think you've had enough of the Realme 9s, think again because the 9 Pro series is incoming. And yes, you heard me right, it's the 9 Pro series, multiple phones, the 9 Pro and the Pro Plus, they're expected to launch at 17 and 21,000 rupees uh, respectively. Now the Pro, it's supposed to have a Snapdragon 695 paired with a 120 Hertz LCD panel. And the Pro Plus, it's supposed to have a MediaTek Diamond City 920 and be paired with an AMOLED 90 Hertz panel. Pretty interesting stuff. From a Realme mid-ranger, let's bounce into flagship territory, the Galaxy S22 series, probably uh, one of the phones that we are most excited for. It's supposed to be launching this month. And guys, as always, Samsung's gonna have two SKUs. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 uh, toting S22 series phones will be selling in the US and some other markets. India is expected to get the Exynos 2200. This is the point where you generally hear collective, collective drones and boos, but not this time. The Exynos 2200 is supposed to have the AMD RDNA 2 uh, Xclipse 920 GPU. And with leaked benchmarks, it seems to be kicking the Adreno 730 on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. I mean, it's, it's just been blowing it away. Uh, now, typically Samsung has a habit of, you know, handicapping their Exynos variants so that they are on par with, the, with their Qualcomm counterparts. Given that they sell their flagship phones with Qualcomm chipsets in the US, and that's a very important market to them. But even if Samsung does end up handicapping some of this performance, it's very interesting to see an Exynos chip outperform a Qualcomm, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon, at least with the GPU. Now, one more thing that I found very, very interesting is that in the tease, they actually said they're gonna have a noteworthy launch. Now, 2021 was the first year in a long, long time that we didn't have a new Note phone. What happened last year was the S21 Ultra came with a digitizer, but you had to separately purchase a S Pen that could fit into a case and all that. Uh, but this time, maybe the S22 Ultra is actually a Note, that would make me very happy. The Note series has been one that I've forever loved. One of my favorite phone series of all time. So I would love to see that make a comeback. Now, another flagship that I'm really looking forward to is the iQ9. This, you know, is not so much as a rumor because it did launch already in China. So it's got, it's, it's pure flagship. It's got a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. It's got a LTPO AMOLED panel with a 120Hz refresh. Uh, good optics, it looks awesome. Now this phone is supposed to be hitting Indian shores in February. And given how iQ usually prices their phones, how competitive they are, I think this is gonna be one to watch. Now from iQ, it's, of course, we're gonna jump to Vivo. You should have seen that coming, right? <laughs> it's only obvious. The X80 series is also supposed to be launching this month. And we've been hearing various reports, Diamond City 7000, 8000, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but it looks like there are gonna be multiple phones. The regular X80 should be getting the Diamond City 7000, the X80 Pro, the Diamond City uh, 8000, and the Pro Plus should get Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. At least that's how it looks like, and it should also be paired with LTPO AMOLED panels, 120 Hz and all that stuff. Typically for Vivo's X series phones, cameras have been really good. They've been the focal point. Uh, and I expect that trend to continue with the X80 as well. Another Chinese launch that I'm really, really looking forward to would be the Redmi K50 series. Now the K20 series and the K40 series have been some of my favorite phones in the last few years. And with the K50 series, Redmi seems to be continuing uh, with that. Now, it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any drastic change like they had with the K30 here. Uh, we are supposed to be getting four phones. The regular K50, it's supposed to have a Diamond City 7000. Then the K50 Pro, which is rumored to have a Snapdragon 870 or a 888. It would be very weird if they went with the 870 given the K40 had a triple eight. But hey, this is what the rumors seem to indicate, 870 or triple eight. And the K50 Pro Plus, should be having a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. We also expect there to be a follow-up to the Redmi K40 Gaming and a K50 Gaming. And this one is expected to launch with a Diamond City 9000. It should retain those shoulder buttons from its predecessor, which were yeah, a little bit gimmicky, but still kind of useful. A little bit of mixed feelings on that. What did you guys think about the K40 Gaming shoulder triggers? This is the phone that sold as the Poco F3 GT in some markets. Did you like them, hate them, whatever, whatever you thought about it, let me know in the comments below. 
Any which ways, these four phones are expected to launch. Uh, they also came out and said they'll be launching the Snapdragon variants first before the MediaTek. So maybe the K50 Pro Plus would be the first to launch. Uh, Pro and Pro Plus rather, only time will tell. From the flagships, let's step back down to the mid-range. The Redmi Note 11 and the 11S are launching in India on February 9th. Now, Xiaomi, Redmi, Poco, they love naming and renaming their phones. So it's a little bit convoluted. Can't really predict what exactly they're going to launch. But it seems like they're going to be launching one phone with a Snapdragon 680, another with a MediaTek Helio G, uh, G96. And these phones can, are expected to have MIUI 13, of course, in case you don't know uh, what features MIUI 13 brings with it. I have a dedicated video. So here's a card. Go ahead, check it out. And they're also expected to have AMOLED panels, fast charging, high resolution cameras and all that. The Redmi Note lineup has generally set the bar for what a mid-ranger should be. So these are going to be really interesting launches. We'll know more on February the 9th. Talking about February the 9th, Vivo is not going to let Redmi launch a phone on a post. They do have a launch on the same day as well. The T1 is launching in India on February 9th. One thing about this phone is that they're teasing it as the fastest and slimmest 5G phone under 20K. Now, the T1 already launched in China. It launched with the Snapdragon 778G. But the price of that phone, if you convert it, it comes to somewhere around 25, 26,000 rupees. So it's highly unlikely that they're going to launch the same phone in India. They did launch a T1X as well. So maybe uh, they go the Xiaomi route and kind of rebrand that as a T1 for India. I don't know. That one had a Dimensity 810 for whatever that's worth. So this is another launch that we are looking forward to. Now, finally, there are the Oppo Renos, the Reno 7 to be precise. This is again a Series 3 have launched globally. The Reno 7, the Reno 7 Pro and the Reno 7 SE. The 7 with the Snapdragon 778G, the SE with the Diamond City 900 and the 7 Pro with the Diamond City 1200. At least two of these uh, Reno 7 Series phones are expected in India. And this launch is happening very quick, just in a couple of days. February 4th is when we'll know more. So guys, these are basically all the phones that are coming, that are launching in February. If I left out any, please do let me know in the, in, the, in the comments below. And what do you guys think? Which one of these launches are you the most excited for? For me, it's going to be the S22 Ultra. I'm hoping to see that S Pen, hoping that they launch a Note as the S22 Ultra because, I don't know, I just love that series so much. What about you? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, we are at the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.